Hello everyone, uh, in this video I'll show you how the gradient descent algorithm works using the relationship between degree Fahrenheit and degree Celsius. I hope this video will help you to understand how this algorithm works. First, I'll show you how to derive the equation that shows the relationship between degree Fahrenheit and degree Celsius using the freezing and boiling point of water and then at high level i'll explain a little bit about loss function in gradient descent and then i'll focus on one type of loss function called mean squared error we'll use this as a, a loss function and calculate gradients using the chain rule of calculus uh, finally I'll show you how to implement the gradient descent algorithm from scratch using Python in Jupyter and Notebook. Okay, now let's see the relationship between degree Fahrenheit and degree Celsius. We can derive the equation that uh, shows the relationship between degree Fahrenheit and degree Celsius using the freezing and boiling point of water. As you might know, uh, water freezes at 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. It boils at 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you subtract 0 degrees Celsius from 100 degrees Celsius, you will have 100 scales. You have 100 scales between 0 and 100. Similarly, if you subtract 32 from 212, you'll have 180 scales in degree Fahrenheit. So this, these values are the same. This 100 is equal to 180 because they convey the same kind of information, right? So 100 scales in degree Celsius is equal to 100 scales in degree Fahrenheit. That's what we have over here. So if you express 180 in terms of 100, which means 180 is just 1.8 times 100. This 100 is the same as degree Celsius. So this implies that degree, Celsius, degree Fahrenheit is equal to 1.8 times degree Celsius. If that is not clear for you, let's see the, the trend using the following table. So. If you have 1 in degree Celsius, you will have 1 times 1.8 in degree Fahrenheit. If you have 2, you will have 2 times 1.8 in degree Fahrenheit. If you go just like that, if you go to 100, you will have 100 times 1.8, which is the same as what we have over here. Right? So, degree Fahrenheit can be expressed as 1.8 times degree Celsius because these values are the same as these values. But since we started from um, 32, the final equation should be degree Fahrenheit equals 1.8 times degree Celsius plus 32. So this is the equation that relates uh, two temperature scales, degree Fahrenheit and degree Celsius. If you are asked to find degree Celsius, just rearrange this, this equation. In that case, it becomes degree Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 1.8 just like this so for the time being let's focus on degree Fahrenheit this equation this is just a linear equation the slope of this equation is 1.8 the y-intercept is 32 this can be represented by y equals to wx plus b where w is the slope of the line and b is the y-intercept of the line we can also get the equation that shows the relationship between degree Fahrenheit and uh, degree Celsius using scatter plot in Microsoft Excel. Uh, let us see how it works. Uh, first, you need to select column A, which contains uh, degree Celsius, and column B, which contains uh, degree Fahrenheit. So, column A, which contains degree Celsius, will be plotted in the x axis, uh, column B, which contains degree Fahrenheit, will be plotted in the y axis. Once you select them, go to insert, then charts, click uh, this one, 
scatter so you will see this line this is a straight line to get the equation on the line just click on the plus sign uh, trend line check this box then go to more options then check the box that says display equation on the chart this one so you will see the equation on the on the chart can increase the font size just let's make it uh, 14 so this is the equation that shows the relation between degree Fahrenheit and degree Celsius so y means degree Fahrenheit x is degree Celsius in machine learning or deep learning loss function measures how close predictor values are to ground truth values let us use an example to explain loss function or cost function at a very high level let's assume that we have two models model 1 and model 2 that can predict degree Fahrenheit values using degree Celsius as an input as you can see model 1 the predictor values of model 1 are way off compared to ground truth values but model 2 the predictor values are close to ground truth values so if you measure the loss in model 1 you will have a very large loss because you are way off from the ground truth values but in the case of model 2 since the values are close to the ground truth values the loss is expected to be smaller so this is the high level definition of cost or loss function okay in the previous slide we saw that loss or cost function measures how close predictor values are to ground truth or observed values in this slide we will see gradient descent gradient descent is an optimization algorithm which is used to find the minimum of a loss or a cost function so what does minimum loss mean minimum loss mean predictor values are very close to ground truth or observer values so the next question is how does the gradient descent algorithm find the minimum value of a cost or a loss function well it uses an iterative process it starts with an arbitrary point like this or this and then it calculates gradients with respect to each variable then it updates the variables or the parameters using this formula minus times learning rate times the gradients so the negative sign indicates that it is decreasing and it keeps repeating these steps until it gets the minimum values just like if it starts from here it keeps decreasing this value until it gets the minimum value or if it starts from here it keeps decreasing until it gets the minimum value where the slope is zero here so with regard to learning rate learning rate is a very small number usually less than 0.01 if you use a very small learning rate it will take longer time to get the minimum of the loss function but if you use larger learning rates you will not get the minimum value you will miss it okay now let's focus on mean squared error mean squared error is one of the most commonly used loss functions in uh, regression problems uh, it is given by uh, this equation yi minus yi hat yi is ground truth or observed values and y hat is predictor value so this difference yi minus y hat is commonly known as error so you need to square the error so that always you'll get a positive la value so squared error then you'll sum all these squared errors which runs from i up to n and then take their average that's called mean right mean squared error so the name is very self-explanatory that value is called mean squared error so yi hat can be substituted by 
wxi plus b if you substitute that you will have this equation so this part of the equation could be treated as a composite function a composite function contains inner and outer function the outer function is a square function the inner one is yi minus wx i plus b so if you consider this as a composite function the square function in the inner function generally if you take the derivative of x square you will get twice. so the outer function is just the same as this one the only difference is the outer function in this case contains another function instead of x okay so according to chain rule if you have a composite function like f of g of x if you take the derivative first you have to take the derivative of the extra the outer function which is f prime is the outer function multiply that by the inner function times take the derivative of the inner function which is g of x so in our case we have two variables the first variable is w which is the slope and the second one is b which is the y-intercept so we need to calculate gradients with respect to each variable so if you take the partial derivative of uh, the loss function with respect to w we have to directly apply this formula so first we need to take the derivative of the outer function which is a square function a power function so if you take the derivative of that it becomes two times the inner function so that's why you get two times the inner function and then take the derivative of the inner function the inner function is this so in this case we are taking the partial derivative of the function with respect to w so the other values like y i and b are constant so we, we just make the derivative of a constant is zero so what uh, we will have is this one zero minus uh, this part is w x i and then the other one b is zero so if you uh, if you take this one xi the derivative of w with respect to partial derivative of w with respect to w is just one so you will have minus xy from this part minus xi times two this gives you minus two xi times the uh, inner function so this is how you calculate uh, gradients with respect to um, the slope w you will do the same thing for the second variable which is the y intercept uh, the outer function is the same in both cases but the inner function in this case you have to take the partial derivative with respect to b so this part becomes zero this part becomes zero so you need to consider only this part so zero zero here partial change of b with partial change of b this part is minus one minus one times 2 minus 2 times the inner function so this is how you calculate the gradients with respect to um, each variable we can also drive gradients using a substitution method uh, let's see the, how this works okay so we have this equation the mean squared error equation so we can use substitution method so if you use that let's let's represent that u is the inner function and u squared u squared is l right so our goal is to find the partial derivative of l with respect to w so to achieve this first you need to take the partial derivative of l with respect to u and partial derivative of u with respect to w and then we need to multiply them so if you do the first one which is partial derivative of l with respect to u you will get to u just this one is to u partial derivative of u with respect to w this gives you uh, minus xi because 
y i and b are constants the derivative of a constant is zero so you'll get minus x i so if you multiply this by this one you'll have this and then this partial change of u will be cancelled by partial change of u so you'll have partial change of l over partial change of w so if you multiply that to u times minus x i this equals to minus 2 x i times u so we know that u is the inner function so if you put that one you'll get this and if you put the final uh, gradient equation so you will have this one it's the same as what we have uh, before you can do the same thing with the uh, y-intercept partial change of uh, loss function with respect to b the first part is the same but the only difference is uh, the second part which is partial change of u with respect to b in this case all the other values are zero except b so this becomes zero zero and then we'll have minus one so if you multiply this by this you'll get uh, this part so as usual partial change of u will be cancelled by partial change of u then you'll have partial change of l over partial change of b which is 2u times minus 1 which is equivalent to say minus 2 times u u is we have already over here just substitute that value so you'll get this one and the final equation is this okay through an iterative process the gradient distance algorithm keeps calculating uh, gradients and update the parameters or the variables using this formula learning rate times the gradients it will repeat these things until it gets minimum loss in the case of degree celsius and degree fahrenheit minimum loss is achieved if the slope of the the line is 1.8 and the y-intercept of the line is 32 until it gets these values we want the gradient descent algorithm to calculate gradients using this formula and update the slope and the y-intercept using this formula in the second part, I will show you the implementation of the gradient descent algorithm using a Jupyter notebook.